Amanda, um, Amanda, you live in Minnesota? Is that correct? I do. Yes, sir. How old are you? I'm 39. So do you record the police? I do record the police. How come? All the time. Have you ever been married? No. Okay, so no. Well, what about your boyfriends? I'm going to guess they've probably been wrongly arrested. Yes. Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the main reasons I started recording in the first place. Um, one of my boyfriends when I was younger, um, used to get discriminated against all the time. We see a pull over in his car, save one of those old schools, and um, we get pulled out of the car at one point. I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's well, really bad. I'm sorry for interrupting. Explain. What is old school? Was it a Cadillac? It was a Bonneville. It was a 79. Is there other people that record the police with you in Minnesota? Not really, no. I'm like one of the only ones in the Midwest that I know of. Um, a friend of mine named Andrew, who kind of helped get me into it, he... Um, was an activist who actually mentored me quite a bit. He's a really good activist. You might have even heard of him, but he um, has done a lot. He's actually slowed down quite a bit, though. We just don't have time to record together very much anymore. Okay, how would I have heard of him? What is his name? Andrew, you said? Andrew Henderson. Okay. He, he had cops fired from here. Um, he's done a lot, actually. He's made the news quite a few times. Does he have a channel? Recording cops. I'm sorry for interrupting. Does he have a channel? Or does he have, like, a YouTube channel? Does he have yes, a it's the Drooks. The Drooks. Yep, the D R E W K S. I'll have to look that up and, and like and sub subscribe after we're done. So I thought I was supposed to be interviewing you. Well, what do you do in your spare time besides recording cops, though? Do you have any kind of hobbies? I don't have much of a life, I'm going to tell you the truth. I used to ride motorcycles a lot. Um, I used to have a, a boat and I used to go fishing a lot. All the things I used to do, they kind of stopped when I started recording the police. I mean, I started recording them a long, long time ago, but when I started, in like around 2012, when I started recording them almost daily and probably daily, all the all the things I used to do kind of, um, you know, I couldn't afford to keep a boat and cars and motorcycles and because I um, no longer had an income. I don't remember exactly when it was, somewhere around, somewhere in between 2012 and 2013. I started working full time again, and I went like eight months straight where I didn't. I don't think I recorded the police one time. You know, so like, oh. if I have a full time job, I, I end up I don't have the energy to record the police, record the police full time. I don't. Um, I don't know if that was a good answer or not, but um, it's, it's an honest answer. It's a good answer. I mean, I, I ride my bicycle a lot. If you want to call that a hobby, but but a big part of that is I'm recording the police while I'm doing it. So. I guess my hobby um, is recording the police, if that makes sense. And you know, it makes perfect sense. You know what they say: if you have a job that you're passionate about and that you enjoy, then that, you know what I mean. Most people don't enjoy their jobs, so um, I don't know if I could actually call it a job, but it's what I do. I hope I can make a living at it someday, and then and then it could be both. It's terrible. I, it's terrible. That's the only thing I do. That's, yeah. If we're responding to a call and I go blasting through a light or something. He would wait. He would just stop and wait for the light to change instead of... I think everybody I know is actually like that. I'm, I'm acting like that's unusual. Most I mean, most people, when they go record with me or... or um, yeah, when they go record with me, they expect that the police are going to harass them or arrest them just for being associated with me. And it's turned out to be pretty accurate. I think it's the opposite. Like they would just leave you alone. They do. They leave me... They, they treat me really good, but... But they still try to intimidate people that join me, I think, sometimes. Police are hard to predict sometimes. I, the police in my neighborhood, I, I kind of do whatever I want constantly. Almost almost in an um, arrogant fashion, and and they just ignore me. Well, they don't know who you are, you know what I mean? I yeah. think that like if we switched spots for a couple of days, like I was there recording and you were here, we'd get completely different outcomes. For sure. If you were, I mean, just like what they did to Laura, like to Laura, they weren't very nice to Laura at first. They probably still aren't. I, I'm not up to date on their stuff, but it seems like police are a lot nicer to me than they are to other people. That's because they don't want to be YouTube celebrities. I think I, I think uh, I paid my dues. If there's such a thing, yeah, the ones that even hate me. You they, earned your stripes. Yeah. Hey, so tell me about that time that you guys all got charged with something and you, um, this is an older case of yours, but I remember that um, you guys represented yourself. So this was, I think it was you, Catman, and, um, and Ricky Monday, and then they, and the jury acquitted all of you. It was me, Pilot, and Ricky Monday. 
El Segundo police have a, re, a refinery there and they treat it like it's a terrorist target and if you have a camera they'll take your media try to take your media and, and delete it and they'll try to like they'll handcuff people detain them while they erase their memory cards and and just and they'll question them and put them on the terrorist watch list and all kinds of bullshit like that this is the first time Ricky Monday had ever met we had ever met with him cabin's way back they've got an eye on Ricky Monday they're coming right now the guy who saw me he tried to he tried to tell him he's like no we've been through this before he tried to call it off and he and he did call it off so so they so they let Ricky go because they realized that I was there and that they realized we were setting him up we were riding away one of the detectives lied and said we were um, blocking traffic they ended up bringing all these lieutenants and everybody just came and surrounded us on the street they said we blocked traffic when the um, the camera showed there was not even any vehicles on the street and plus we were riding lawfully so did you take it all the way to a jury trial it, it wasn't it would have been a jury trial but it's a judge trial because um because it's traffic you can't have a in Ca i don't know what it's like there but in california for a, a traffic infraction you can't have a jury he says i was on assigned to terrorism task force that day the judge interrupted him and he said we've got three defendants here charged with bicycle infractions and you're talking about terrorism he said, that's it. He said, this case is going, this is, we're putting this one off till after lunch. This is going to be the last case of the day. And we were fighting. Me, Poetic, and Ricky are in the court whispering and fighting because each of us knows how, to, how we're going to beat it. We all disagreed. Ricky used his strategy. Poetic used, I think, his strategy. And probably all that shit didn't even matter. I think the judge made up his mind as soon as they started talking about terrorism. We were released yeah. at the same time, so Ricky Monday and I and Poetic chased them down to their cars in the in the parking lot. And I think that's probably why you asked about it, was because of what happened yeah. in the parking lot. That's my fault. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. That was, uh, I just watched that today. It was funny as so. hell. Oh. They retaliated against me and probably all of us, we, you know. I think I got thrown in jail shortly after that for something, I don't remember what. They, those guys hold grudges <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, they do. Did you ever see the one where I trespassed a cop from my parking lot? Well, he uh, pulled me over the next day and searched my van and impounded it and everything. Ah, so speaking of retaliation, right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we have all these laws and they apply to us. They don't apply to the police. If they violate our right to free speech or our um, Fourth Amendment, you know, unreasonable searches, what is the penalty that the law outlines for them? Nothing. There's no if, if we're lucky, maybe they later say, oh, sorry about that and let you go. Or even if you sue and win a lawsuit, there's still no penalty for them. They don't have, the law does not apply to them. Well, it's the taxpayers that have to pay. That's why it's up to us to record them, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always the court of public opinion, yeah. which can be very brutal. Uh, nobody wants for the community to hate them and, and for them to be shamed. That's, that's what we have. That's our tool. I think I communicate with a lot of these guys. like. I don't know if anyone else communicates the way I, I just known these guys for so long that a lot of these guys will talk to me like we're like you know they come up to me they know me and they you know we we're on a first name basis and I, I don't know if it's true or not but I like to think that that opens um, doors for them to communicate with other people the same way if they can communicate with me like that and I can communicate with them like that then I think that's like a step in the right direction for um, for other people in the community to be able to do the same thing with the police and, and vice versa. I agree. Right? I totally agree. That's because why my um, whole, pro my whole uh, way of doing things is very non-aggressive. You know what I mean? I'm there and I'm recording, but I'm still going to be polite and cordial as long as they don't give me a reason to, you know, be disrespectful and rude, you know? Yeah. I give well, basically what you, bring, what you bring to the table. You know one of my favorite videos of yours is, though? Mistaken Bacon with Dusty Garber? I'll give you a clue. Because Officer Wayne. Oh, yeah, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Monday and me and Sergeant Wayne. Ricky Monday is golden. He's like, you know how I speak so highly of Catman? Mm -hmm. Ricky Monday too. I mean, when me and Catman know, we can't always get Ricky to come with us. We usually can't get him to come with us. But, but when Ricky comes with us, it's always a, it's always a dope viral video that we that we hear about for years. Sometimes we'll he be has like, no filter. "What's that?" What? He has no filter. He does. He's he's uh. He, what's interesting if you ever met him, he's he's a great he's a great guy. So ask ask Foxy when you talk to her, because I know she knows him. Um, 
he's the nicest guy you're ever going to meet. Um, he, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't take shit from the police, though, for whatever reason. No, <laughs> But, or maybe, or anybody. Uh, well, I, I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like any of the police really give me shit these days. You know? Um, I think you know that. And, and I know, I know how to, um, you know, I know how to walk up to the line and then take a step back. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get beat up or get myself arrested or, um, and I'm not trying to make conflict necessarily. I, you know, mostly I'm just trying to make my videos and if I see some, something that's relevant, I want to try to comment on it. You know, I'm not, a lot of, I think some people think I just, I'm like trying to provoke or be an antagonist and if I ever was, there was good reason for it at the time. And probably just like now, I feel like there's a good reason for, for me to have settled down because I feel relationships, you know, like, yeah. Sometimes the police will be like, what's up, Daniel? You know, like right in front of the person that they're kind of like not treating so nicely. I'll say something kind of mm -hmm. smart ass, but because um, I don't want the suspects to feel like I'm there. A lot of times the suspects don't understand. They think I'm there like on the police side, making things worse for them when I, I'm all, the suspect is always innocent even if he's not because right innocent until proven guilty you never proven guilty right there on the street so he's always innocent the police don't the police aren't always innocent until proven guilty they don't supposedly have that right so I try to side with you know the suspect as much as I can and even if they're guilty they they, they still deserve to be treated with respect and and Please. It is not up to the cops to, cops to you know, dish out punishment or decide whether or not they're guilty. Uh, that's right. And I feel like a lot of times they should be dishing out discretion. And just because somebody's guilty of something doesn't mean they need a citation or an arrest. You right. know what I mean? Just because some, cause there's so many stupid laws on the books. And, and I mean, in California, this is what, the nanny state. It's like, I mean, you can't even, it's like the, the police think they get to decide when I cross the street. Like I'm not a big enough boy to cross. A residential street I can cross the street when I feel like it and I don't care how many lanes there are you know I, I don't I don't need the police telling me what you're you know. assuming the risks I mean if you you know you hit by a car it's your own fault for crossing whatever wherever, you know what I mean then that's your punishment well that's you know? that's different if I'm running in, I'm not saying running in front of traffic and causing accidents if I'm responsible and reasonable I don't give a shit what the rule is or what the law is if I'm being responsible and and the, um, the interesting thing is please don't enforce those kind of laws on me because I'm trying to get the shot, get my camera, and, and I might cut across a bunch of lanes of traffic, like put out my arm or something, and, get, and the traffic might have to stop abruptly. It's like, Daniel, you did that right in front of us. But, you know, like, um, like, I guess I'm held to a higher standard and police aren't. Yeah, I don't know where that saying yeah. came from. You know, the, we're held to a higher standard. They're held to no standard at all. The law doesn't apply to them. How is that a higher standard? That's just like a... I don't know what, a joke. I've been living in the shack. It's like in the back house, or it's not even a house, but it's in the back of a house, right? Okay. I, and um, I've been here for five years. For like two or three years, I would have to ride to my dad's. I would ride from Linux to my dad's to edit videos. And then from there, I would ride in the middle of the night. After I was done recording, I would go to either the library or the courthouse to the steps and use their Wi-Fi to upload my videos. And so I spent years like spending the night on the steps, either at the court or um, or the library, trying to upload my videos. And then, and then one day I was talking to the guy in the front house, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I've got 300 megabytes per second internet." You know, so like I spent a year riding to the library, laying on the step when I could have just been in my house, uploading from my house. I don't know if that's funny, but. <laughs> But, Damn. So, like, for the last year, I've had internet in my little shack. But, but before that, I either had to ride to my dad's or to the, or to the library or the courthouse because. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sure you got good exercise. Maybe you got some good footage. Yeah, of course. I mean, so yeah, that got me out and riding and whatever. But, um, but yeah, I spent way too much time sleeping on the steps, promote your channel and whatever, and that people. <laughs> you know, let people see, you know, other personalities. Yeah. Also, he, but also he'll, 
on those phone calls from the detectives to him, he always inquires, do you have Mr. Salmon's video? And, and when they say yes, he says, make sure nothing happens to that video. That video is evidence. If you guys damage, delete, or alter that video, you'll be sued. And then he says, okay, Daniel, go ahead and say whatever. Go ahead and talk. Years ago, I mean, he used to speak highly of me. He would say, Daniel knows how to record the police. He knows how far to stand. He knows what to say and he knows what to, not to say. But then he reviewed some videos where I was shouting the effort at the police. And then I don't think he, I haven't heard him say all those nice things about me ever since. So Does, that doesn't look very good to a jury. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't look very good to a civil attorney because he's not going to, he's not about to take a case to a jury with some jackal that's shouting the F word. So, right? Yeah, probably not. So I quit shouting the F word, but the damage is done. Right? I think, I think you do a really good job engaging with them and you know what I mean? And they know you and it's like, you know them and they know that they need to shape it up, you know, and yeah. once, especially when you're around, so they know they're going to be filmed and then they know that you are going to point out everything that they do that's wrong. Yeah. I had a, um, did you by chance see the a recent one where there was a black guy, black Hawthorne cop, kind of a big guy and, and it was like a little kid that he kind of detained, a kid kind of ran. Yes, yes I did and he like, he like slammed him down. Could and you, okay, I remember with my eyes I thought, that's why I thought, I, I thought he picked him up and threw him down. Okay, but I, my monitor is small and when I was editing the video I couldn't see it. Did you, could you actually see it, showed him slam him down? Like, you know, it, it was hard to, it looked like he did. I was kind it of far. Like he did. I was far away with the wide angle camera, so I don't know that, whatever I seen with my eyes, I don't know that the cameras picked it up. If it did, I, I couldn't see it on my small monitor, but. Um, it looked like the kid got slammed down, but I don't know if the kid was fighting with him to begin with. No, or... he, didn't. No, he didn't resist or nothing like that. But okay. um, but I just, I, uh, I just had a conversation with him. Apparently, I've been, I was like, I'm mad I put mental midget, you know, on the, on the screen, you know, I call the yeah. mental midget, because he's, he's just always kept his mouth shut around me. It just seemed like he was following orders. I don't know why, I just thought he was dumb. It turns out he's got a master's degree. Him and I had a really good conversation the other day. I'm excited about that. I guess, I guess, um, I'll, when I have it in my hands, then I'll, um, I'll share it with you. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I know it'll be good. Makes sense. That takes a lot of nerve for him to have, accept, you know, letting you interview him. But I appreciate you talking to me, Amanda. You're really cute. And I know, and even without meeting you, I know you're fun. Because I, I think because I watched some of your selfies and stuff, I could just tell you're, you're a fun person. Well, Amanda, do you have some magic to get to? I do, actually. Okay. I have a meeting that I'm late for. Why okay. didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that? Because I, I don't really want to attend this meeting. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sorry. I don't mean, is it, I'm sorry for making you late for whatever you're doing. We could talk anytime. No, you, know? you didn't make me late. It's okay. I could have cut it short. That's fine. Okay, well, just keep that in mind. We could talk anytime. Get back to what you're doing, and we'll talk when you have time, okay? All right. Thank you. It's nice talking to you. You too, Amanda. Have a nice day. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.